as I said, our fish room is in our living room. And I love the way that lighting plays on the wall behind the tank, as you can see. And so I will tell you, we get more entertainment out of watching the fish tank than we do out of the TV, which is off most of the time. <laughs> and then off to the other side is where that bow tank resides. And we're looking at the end of it. You can see how thick the sags are there. And so that's our fish room. Well, good morning, fans. It is August the uh, 3rd. And time for a quick update. Not a whole lot new. The plants seem to be growing like crazy, as always, with that uh, fertilization program of the CO2, liquid CO2 uh, booster every morning. The leaf zone fertilizer added once a week and plant tabs put under the main plants on a quarterly basis. And so you're looking at the corner tank and to reaffirm the effectiveness of that fertilization program. Bruce, who introduced me to that concept, that process, uh, was away for a month and his beautiful tanks that you've seen before uh, I asked him when he came back, I said, how did the uh, fish make out? He said, oh, just fine. He says, but without the daily fertilizing, he said, for that month, the plants did not grow at all, which is fine. They didn't have to trim them, but uh, it just goes to show you, if you're trying to grow out plants like we do here, that really is an important aspect of it. Now, something I wanted to show you here. This morning, I was trimming some of these plants just because <clears throat> they were getting overcrowded. And so I'm going to try and give you a quick show here of how big some of the leaves have gotten. <clears throat> now here is, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this or not, we'll find out real soon. Here is a Madagascar lace plant leaf that I had to trim because it started to get old. And look how big that is, it's almost the height of the tank. Beautiful leaf. Maybe I can show it better here. Not sure if that's going to work or not. But you can see the brownish, that's why I had to get rid of it. But look at the size of it. But next to that, look at the size of the Amazon sword plant leaf. And again, I'll try and show it to you here. And then I'll take it out of the tank and hopefully you can see it when I bring it down here. And yes, I'm dripping water on the floor, sorry about that. But look at the size of that leaf. And that whole plant back there has leaves of that size. And so, again, just trying to show you how big that is. Look at the length of that. And again, it was starting to droop at the end, so I decided to take it out. But it just gives you some degree of appreciation for how well that fertilization program does work. I could not be more pleased. What's also interesting is, and as I've said in past videos, I take back my complaint about that plant that we got up at Disc Madness up in North Jersey. And I'm going to zoom in on it so you can see what I'm talking about. That reddish leaf plant right there, okay? When I bought it, as I said, there was a huge plant that they just trimmed off the leaves when you wanted to buy a plant. They clipped off about six or seven stems from the mother plant. And I had asked them at the time, I said, if you went to buy that whole mother plant, which was absolutely gorgeous, in a tank by itself, a tank this size, it was the centerpiece with nothing else in the tank. And I estimated it would be worth about $100. Without saying that to him, he figured out how many pieces he could get off it and then with the roots and so forth and he came up with a, a price in the $90 range. 
And so it was very interesting to me, uh, as I had complained on an earlier video about not getting the roots with the plant like you normally would if you buy plants. Uh, but I have to take that back. It has done amazingly well, as you can see here. And from this plant, which I constantly cut in half and then put back down in the gravel, as you see right here in the front, uh, in the bow tank, which we'll visit in just a minute, you'll see how much growth that is. And that plant is almost as big as it was in that mother plant, if you will. Um, had to do a major culling of the neons that you see here. I noticed, uh, I thought one or two with a white spot on their mouth. And I thought before everybody else catches whatever that is, I, I'll get rid of that fish. And so I went in and started catching the fish that had the white dot. Well, then I found another one with a white dot. Before I got through, I had nine out of the 20 neons here with whatever that disease is. And so, uh, not wanting to get everybody sick with it, I did uh, a mass a release of Nemo into the water system, if you will, and uh, have not seen any more since. So that's a good thing. There's that one green barb that we had three of them. Two of them died within a reasonable time of each other, and this one is just doing just fine by itself, hanging out more with the tiger barbs than normal. I did move a couple sword tails, uh, they're uh, pineapple sword tails, uh, young ones that have grown up from babies in the office tank that you've been following, and uh, they're in here now. And lo and behold, we got a bunch of guppies that I moved out here just because the office tank was getting too crowded, and they seem to be doing fine here. And uh, I have seen some babies in here. You see that red tail shark uh, just to the center? going into that plant that we just talked about. And then the tricolored shark in the front is huge. Uh, love the red-tailed shark. There's something about them that I really like. The jet black, the, the bright red, and uh, there's that one that you just saw. And then there's two smaller ones uh, that I introduced here. And they haven't been growing up much. Here's the red-tailed shark right down low center have not been able to catch that big pleco that I wanted to move out of here. Uh, I've tried a number of times putting a butterfly net with, uh, with uh, algae tabs in it to entice him into the net. He's come out, he's nudged the food around a bit, and the last time he actually came in the back side of the net. And I thought, alright, push yourself in there, and that's what I need, and again, he outsmarted me. So he's still in here, and uh, you very seldom see him. If I put in some algae tabs in the evening, he'll come out briefly, but very skittish. And so you see the water hysteria, or water sprite. I, I can never get which one it is over here on the left. And I just trimmed that back by multiplying, by cutting in half and planting the other half down there. And so that grew up to the top and was starting to block out the light. And that's one of the reasons why I took those big leaves out that we just looked at. Uh, they were blocking the light from the other plants, and as a result, some of the plants aren't doing as well as I think they should. As you can see right here, that, uh, I think it's a red something sword, is not growing out as well as I thought it should, and I thought maybe it wasn't getting enough light. So, we've uh, freed up some of the shadowing plants above. And like I said, if you look at this now, you can see the size of some of the Amazon sword leaves in the background here. See how big they are? Yeah, they're huge. And there's that red tail shark just going down. I'm working with a new camera here. And uh, the other one was going south on me. It wasn't focusing properly. And so hopefully this will give a better picture of the whole situation once I get used to it. Bought it out on uh, eBay. You get used cameras out there pretty reasonably inexpensive. 
and I've been very satisfied with what I've been able to do out there. A lot of red uh, on the sword tails, the black, red, black wag sword tails. Uh, I'm trying to think what else is new here. There's nothing else new as such, and so we'll move over to the bow tank. And so here we are at the bow tank. Uh, again, a 50 gallon curved front tank. And you see there are angelfish back in here now. We've lost them over time and I stopped trying to populate them because there was something wrong. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And so introduced a couple young ones and they seem to thrive okay. And you see right there in the front uh, three of the black ones. And there's a couple marble colored ones in the background someplace. But what I want to focus on here is, again, the plants. The, the, the lush growth is just to die for. And right in the center, that reddish leaf plant that we talked about in the corner tank is also growing out here. This is a, an offshoot of that. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's nice and full. And I keep trimming off pieces of it and putting it down into the base. But again, this plant, when it's full, like it is in here, take that about four times, and that's what that one plant looked like at this madness. And uh, while I was disappointed at the time, in retrospect, it was the right thing to do. And so, uh, the plecos here are getting too big, and they continue to uproot the plants, of course. But they're thriving, and uh, as are all the plants. The uh, plants just to the right of that red plant, uh, those light colored, lime colored, frilly leaved plant. Uh, I'm losing some of the leaves now that they're getting older. I see one I need to trim right there. And uh, right next to that, of course, is the Madagascar lace plant. You can see the, the brownish tinge on that one leaf and so when I take that out it causes other leaves to grow and then you've got the Madagascar lace plant buried in there doing equally well and the fish love it I mean the fish are just always in and out of everything the uh, sword tails and platys here are doing well not having any babies as such but I'm not trying to breed them and uh, some of them have been moved out to the outdoor half-barrel pond that I've talked about in the past. The blue grommy right in the center doing well, there's a couple of them. And then you see the zebras going back and forth toward the top there. And they have maintained their very healthy look. Like I said, when I first got them, I bought ten. I tried two in that outdoor pond, and that was a mistake. It was probably too early, and the temperature fluctuations they just disappeared. They died. And uh, lo and behold, these are still, they look very pregnant all the time, filled with eggs. And I don't know whether it's just the healthy eating, because they certainly do take advantage when there's food put in there, or whether they're all females or something. I don't know. But they certainly do look good, and that's not been my history with zebras. As much as I love them, they seem to be a very hardy fish. Uh, for whatever reason, they tend to thin out and die. These have been doing really good since Bruce and I went out to that uh, fish store up in East Brunswick and I found these beautiful ones. And so that's uh, basically the story, especially of the planting here. And you can see those Amazon swords doing very well as they always do. And then the other one over to the right, and you can see that right, the dark purplish one to the right. That was a plant. I didn't have room for it, but I couldn't pass it up. It was a very reasonable price, you know, like six or seven dollars, and it was so full that I just had to get it. And so that's the one right here. And it's doing okay, even though it's buried along the uh, Balisneria there and the uh, Sagittarius. Not Sagittarius. Whatever. I keep coming up with that Sagittarius and uh, or that that. I, I don't know. I anyway, got the wrong word. You know what I'm talking about. So, let's take another look at uh, some of the other things here. 
There's one of the two plecos in this tank down on the left, and you can see how big that sword plant is. Uh, if I move the camera over a little bit, you get a better view of it to appreciate how gorgeous that is. And of course, there's that plant that I keep telling you how good it's growing. It's got nice coloration to it. And then of course we have that those other two plants including the Madagascar lace plant. The fish are all out there saying, hey, take my picture, take my picture. And there's one of those other angel fish I was telling you about. Everybody seems to be doing just fine. No visit to the fish room here would be complete without stop looking at the bettas. And uh, again, they they're very entertaining. If you go near the tank, and I'm not far, not close enough to cause this to happen right here, but if I go close enough, they come to the front like they're waiting to be fed or something. And so then you get a, a good show. And let me see if I can do that for you. i got to lock down this camera a little bit because I've been moving around and see if they'll do that for me. And so if I come here, for example, they think I'm going to feed them. And the red on this particular bed is just gorgeous. And I swear they recognize the container with the food. And so I'm going to give them just a little bit and see if that does what I'm hoping it will do. And that is one. Here he comes. See how quickly they react to that? Now, it, I meant to clean off the glass here. And obviously I didn't. And so as a result, you got some greenish fog in front of the beautiful red there. And this guy over here... He usually comes right out and then shows off. It's almost like he's competing with the other one. So I'm trying to get him to come around and see if I'm tapping on here. And you get some... Look at the size of the fins on him. I mean, when they don't have other fish to nip on their fins, the fins grow out beautifully, don't they? I don't know if I can zoom in without losing the focus here. Again, the lighting is not the best to show up their fins. It's a five-gallon split tank with some LED lighting. And uh, they get in the right place, like the red one just did. Uh, it really shows off the color. And the one on the right is a vari vari variated color fading out into the edge of the fins. And you can see some of that. And if he moves in the right way so that the light hits him, you can really appreciate how well he's doing. But they're both getting very big and very mature. All live plants in here now. My wife took out the two ornamental stuff we had in there. And I do give this a CO2 boost each morning. But I don't do the fertilizer. And uh, I, I really don't want these plants to grow out too much because there's not a whole lot of room in there. But anyway, you get some idea of how they're both doing. And uh, like I said, if they would get into the light in just the right way. I'm looking at it from the side and you can really see uh, some of the coloration. Well, that, that did it. I put my finger in there and dropped some of the food and that took them off in the background a little bit. And you can certainly get the red now. See when it gets in the light? And then the other one, you get some sense of the coloration, even though he's hidden by the plants there. Very happy with that. Wish I had yet another tank to put in the office just by the window. But uh, my wife has said, enough is enough, and I can't disagree with her or argue with her. She's been very uh, patient with this uh, number of tanks we have, which is right now, if I count the pond outside as one, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, 
so I, I can't push it. Let's move into one of the others. Here we are in the office again, and uh, while this tank is still pretty busy with fish, at the same time I've taken quite a few out of here between uh, putting them in an outdoor pond, see how they make out, and also put some in that corner tank as we saw. And part of that is because of this particular fish. That swordtail, female swordtail, that is really beautiful female, always seems to be full and pregnant. And so a lot of these babies came from her, and her youth, or young rather, are uh, part of what I moved into that corner tank. And they've gotten nice size. Did some plant trimming here, had to get rid of some duckweed in order to get light in on uh, that beautiful Amazon sword that you see back there. And then the water sprite up here on the left, that's the mother plant that has spawned the other ones that you saw uh, in that corner tank. Some nice lyre tail mollies and a certain bunch of guppies, some of which are more magnificent than others. And then my other pride and joy, of course, is the clown loach. There's two of them in here, and every time that I put a algae tab in here, as I will do for you right now, uh, it drives these fish crazy competing for it. And so, we drop that down, if it goes down as it is going right now, we'll see the activity that I'm telling you about. And then we'll see both, there's about three or four catfish in here, and the other, well, right now they think they're being fed up there. And yeah, I know, there's an awful lot of fish in this 30 gallon tank, but uh, they keep multiplying. There's the male of the swords that we're talking about, and you will see a couple of the young females uh, that have grown up from there. And now we should see down below, there's the one clown loach, and the other one should be out shortly, because as soon as one's there, the other one's right there competing with it. And they just love the algae tabs. And eventually, all those fish up top that are going to be disappointing because they didn't put any food in the top will be down there with them. And you see that female sword fighting in for her share. And there's one of her young right to the right of her. And so each day I put in one of those tabs, and after they take advantage of the floating food, uh, then they all move down there and compete for it. And you can see a couple of those catfish, and uh, there's the one clown loach. I don't know where the other one is. They, they've grown from small. I mean, I can't afford to buy $16 clown loaches that, that size. And so I buy them on the smaller side, you know, when they're like $5.95. And there's the second one now. And in this particular case, these two have thrived and grown very nicely here, uh, which is more than I can say with the ones in the other tanks. The other tanks, both tanks, came down with ick, and I wasn't able to catch it in time. Here, they don't have that problem, and I'm afraid to move them into the bigger tanks for fear they'll pick up ick again. And so uh, and I've been treating one of the gouramis uh, that had something that looked like egg, but it turns out it wasn't because the very expensive medication that I bought for it, you know, $20 for a container, uh, didn't really touch it. And so it wasn't ick, obviously. And so maybe I've gotten rid of the ick in that particular tank. We'll see. But I, I don't want to jeopardize the health of these two beautiful clown loaches, which I always admire, but have not had much luck with them for exactly that reason. Watched a video recently of a guy who breeds these clown loaches, and it was amazing to see hundreds and how the coloration is so unique in them. It was a fascinating video out on YouTube. I highly recommend looking for it. And uh, meanwhile, you see the fish have change their mind since there's no food up top and they're all down there trying to find out what everybody's excited about. 
All right, we're going to make sure we get this camera charged up a little bit, and I'll take you out to the half-barrel pond just to see if we can see what's going on there. A lot of babies in here. You may see it in the uh, video. I'm not sure, but there are a lot of them, and there's a lot of good plant protection. And so you see a number of them getting into more than tiny baby size. And every once in a while, you obviously, as a new hatch of babies, uh, they're just so terribly small. I love the split tail guppy you see right there. Also that on the right hand side that white guppy now toward this bottom. Uh, I had two of them and I lost the one and it's amazing to me sometimes what happens. But there he is. Very interesting. And there's that split tail one. I did get two of them one time from the fish factory over in Bristol, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, rather, and uh, they've they've maintained themselves. They're thriving. Anyway, that's the office tank. Meet you outside. I think I've done this for you before. Showed you the garden scene, and put that barrel pond in perspective right behind the flowers. And so let's go around and see if we can. Get some pictures of that before we run out on the battery here. Wife, my wife is a gardener. She does a beautiful job. Got that cherry tomato plant behind it that I enjoy the food from. The duckweed here just constantly grows out so quickly. But you may or may not be able to see in the uh, clearing area there. A lot of plants out here that I've thrown cuttings and they grow out nicely. And uh, some of the guppies you can see, there's lots of babies here. You will not see them in this video, I'm sure. But they're there. And we do have this solar panel spritzer, which has to have direct sunlight to power it. But uh, everybody does fine here. I thought with the excessive heat we've had, it's been up in the 95 range and even 100, um, that that might be a problem, but when you put your hand in the water, it's amazing how quickly down below is cool while the top is warm. I think we're getting too much reflection for you really to be able to see the fish. There's a couple guppies up top and the females are nice and full. So they're doing well and I'm really curious at the end of the season what we're going to see here. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the visit to our little garden here. Very colorful. And the fish seem to like it. Until next time, it's been a pleasure having your visit with us. And uh, enjoy the hobby that we have. Comes to talking, I'm the sweet.